Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game to Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD's Raven Ridge, because performance results have leaked onto the internet, as they tend to do. Then we're going to move over to a very different performance level with custom Xeon chips, which may well be indicating that the iMac Pro is going to be an absolute monster when it comes to processing power. And then we'll finally finish off the video with Nirvana. No, it's not Teen Spirit. Instead, Intel are very much putting NVIDIA in the crosshairs because obviously with it comes to uh, NVIDIA, one of their uh, target markets is artificial intelligence and Intel doesn't want NVIDIA to have the run of things at all. So we'll be discussing Nirvana. But first things first, Raven Ridge. So it was only a few days ago that we saw news of the Ryzen 5 2500U quad-core processor, which has a burst speed of 3.6 GHz, along with integrated AMD Radeon Vega graphics. And this, of course, comprises the AMD Raven Ridge APU. Well, several benchmarks have popped up on 3D Mark, and those have been snagged by PC Perspective, and well, we have some level of understanding now on just how well these things stack up. The answer is pretty damn good. The GeForce MX150, aka the Laptop GT1030, does slightly pip it to the post, about 10%, but you must bear in mind that that is, of course, a dedicated chip compared to an APU. Furthermore, we have physics results. So the 2700U scores around 6400, and this is compared to around 8200 for the 8th generation Kaby Lake R processors, which are found in modern day laptops. So, yes, technically the AMD offering is certainly behind Intel and an NVIDIA combination, but that's not all she wrote, because with the Asus ZenBook 3, which you'll notice does indeed feature the same processor, it's running the 8550U, um, its physics score was considerably lower. So there are definitely things to take into consideration, heat, power consumption, all of those bits and bobs, plus as well, of course, pricing. So how well AMD managed to uh, compete against Intel is still very much up in the air. Really, I feel that this is going to be a power consumption and price issue, along with performance, of course, which is always important. But if AMD can manage to match the competition or be roughly on par with them, but perhaps offer a better battery life, which in theory an APU could certainly do, although we'll have to wait for results, so don't hold me to that. Let's just uh, be somewhat cautiously optimistic. Now I know Apple are probably not the most popular of companies on this channel. I'm not sure what's probably less popular, Apple or EA at this point, but hey, whatever. There is, however, a very intriguing set of benchmarks which have appeared on the internet. And these come to us thanks to the Apple-centric website MacRumors.com. So this is for the iMac Pros, and what we have here, in essence, is a Xeon processor, actually several different uh, Xeon processors, with benchmark dates from late August all the way to October. Now, these three different sets of benchmarks, uh, so three different models, excuse me, range from a 3.2 GHz 8-core Xeon, known as the W2140B, and then 3 GHz 10-core Xeon, which is the W2150B. Now, obviously, the lower uh, frequency may raise a few eyebrows, but this is probably because of the actual design of the iMac Pros. And these results are no slouches. So, for example, the 8-core model manages to achieve 23,536. That's very damn impressive. That's over 20% faster than the latest 5K iMac. And that, by the way, comes in with a 4.2 gigahertz quad-core uh, i7 processor. That manages to get a score of around 19,000. However, that gets absolutely ruffle-stomped from orbit by the 10-core iMac, which scores a staggering 35,917 in Geekbench. 
Now, that essentially is 36,000, or, to put it into another perspective, around 40% faster than the latest iMac, and that one is with a 2.7 gigahertz at 12 core Xeon. So that is absolutely ridiculous. Don't forget that this is in conjunction with Radeon Pro Vega Graphics and up to 128 gigabytes of ECC RAM. Now you're going to say to yourself, but Paul, you can build a much better PC than that. You could. You could use something like, I don't know, um, the X299 platform and you could have like 18 cores in there and obviously, you know, they would have an awful lot of performance. Don't forget that Apple's desktop is going to cost about 5000 US dollars, depending on what you decide to go with it in terms of optional extras. And by all means, the 7980XE, I just did a quick search on Geekbench 4, which ironically enough at this point is having a few issues. Helpful. Um, the 7980XE, which of course features 18 cores, so unsurprisingly gets between the, the mid-30s to the low 40s, and that's of course 1000 in terms of the multi-core score. So yes, you could certainly build a better iMac, or a better system than the iMac, at least in terms of raw processing power, and you could certainly crank in as much memory as you wanted, but hey... It's still very cool that we are going to be seeing these uh, new generation of Xeons. And I'm reporting the news. So, next one. And this is an Intel one. This is the Nirvana. No, don't play Teen Spirit in your head. Um, the Neural Network Processor. So, Nirvana actually used to be known back in the day as Crest Lake. But... Intel actually purchased Nirvana, the company, N-E-R-V-A-N-A, -E just to clarify, back in August 2016. So, obviously, it decided to redub the post of the actual architecture's name. Anywho, this thing is not going to be something that you're going to be processing spreadsheets on, gaming on, or any such thing. This thing is purely for neural networks, and it doesn't even function if you're familiar with the basic layout and concept of a CPU, there are many things which you might think, eh, what? That's a bit weird. For example, it doesn't actually have any standard cache hierarchy. In fact, on-chip memory is actually directed by software, which is very different to how a traditional processor works. Now, this is because that typically neural net training on single chips is generally constrained by memory bandwidth and power. So what uh, Intel have decided to do or the team have decided to do, to use a better way of describing it, is to create a new format known as FlexPoint. And this allows scale-up computations to be implemented as fixed-point uh, math. Now, in theory, this reduces power consumption because the circuitry itself is smaller. So, great, right? Everything's fantastic. Well, kinda. Uh, Intel have been a bit cagey regarding performance numbers yet. They're probably still tweaking the architecture, to be fair to them. However, what they have said is, uh, this is in the past, that we'll be looking at around 10 times the efficiency of Maxwell. Unfortunately, and you're probably going to be singing along with me here, Google, uh, NVIDIA, and other companies have already gone to those numbers or beyond. And we are, of course, looking for Volta, which has the Tensor processing units, which absolutely ruffle stomps the previous generation GPUs. Does this mean that this chip is going to be a failure? No, of course not, because honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this particular processor does well in certain benchmarks, or perhaps not so well in other benchmarks, but ultimately it comes down to pricing, flexibility as well, and perhaps... One benefit of this, depending on pricing, is that you don't need a load of GPUs. In other words, it would, in theory, work very well with certain types of software. But once again, it's still very early to tell. And honestly, this could just be a way to enter the market. Because don't forget that Intel have said that this is the first generation, which will be available end of this year. But it already has a roadmap in its mind for multiple successors. So in other words, this is not like a standalone product, and then they're like, yay, that's all done. Oh, and I'm going to throw in a bonus piece of news, because quite frankly, it's quite titchy, tiny, minuscule. And yes, it's also because we're talking about shrinking of processes. So it worked out well. There was a bit of a, a crossover there. 
With the qualification completed three months ahead of schedule, we have commenced 8 L 8 LPP production, says um, Samsung. And they continue to expand its portfolio in order to provide distinctive competitive advantage and excellent manufacturability based upon our customers and the market require. L8 LPP, I don't know why I'm having difficulty pronouncing that, 8 LPP will have a fast ramp up since it's proven 10 NM process technology while providing better performance and stability, scalability, excuse me, than current 10 NM based products. So what do we get here? Well, the key word is 10, because it will reduce power consumption about 10% compared to 10 nm. And with the 10 theme continuing, it also reduces the area reduction by, guessed it, you guessed it, 10%. So this, in theory, should uh, be a small step forward, but many are really looking forward to 7 nm. But hey, this is still pretty damn cool. As I said, I will link that article along with all the other stuff in the description of this particular video. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.